scientist cashing in on a bee bank? Crazy ants are driving us crazy. How can we say bye-bye to rising carbon dioxide levels and predicting the face of humanity on the daily orbit? Hello and welcome to the Daily Orbit. I'm Emerald Robinson. Not long ago, we talked about the massive die-out of honeybees. Well, scientists have come up with a rather interesting solution, a sperm bank for bees. Using liquid nitrogen to preserve samples, scientists at Washington State University will begin to collect bee semen from colonies across the U.S. and Europe. They will either freeze the samples or use them to inseminate queens. Not only do they plan to bump up the numbers, but they also plan to use these samples to create a more diverse and resilient bee species. This beastly bee will be more resistant to the effects of a limited diet as well as to deadly mites. The scientists plan to import three different subspecies of bees to the U.S. to meet demands of beekeepers in different parts of the country. Well, I give this plan B an A for ingenuity. And here's an insect scientists are not looking to breed and save, crazy ants. We've talked about them before, but they're becoming more than just a nuisance. They're causing millions of dollars worth of damage. These omnivorous little invaders are taking over the U.S.'s southeast, and pesticides don't cause them to kick the bucket. They love and destroy electrical wiring and components, eat other species, and monopolize food resources, putting everything from cattle to songbirds at risk. In one year alone, they've caused over $146 million worth of damage in Texas. They're completely eliminating the indigenous fire ant population, which is messing up the entire ecosystem. Interestingly, these ants don't quickly travel on their own. They require a little human transportation to spread. So scientists are saying, humans, be mindful when you travel that you don't have any unwanted passengers. And it's actually been a while since we've given you the lowdown on CO2, so here it goes. Last year, worldwide emissions reached a record high of 31.6 billion tons, even though the U.S. and Europe had record low numbers. China, on the other hand, had a 3.8% growth in emissions. Thanks, China. Just kidding. <laughs> the International Energy Agency warns that if we continue on this rising path, the global temperature could rise over 2 degrees Celsius, which would create irreversible damage across the globe. The IEA is recommending energy efficiency improvement, cutting the use of coal-fired power plants, reducing the release of methane from oil and gas power plants, and gradually reducing fossil fuel subsidies to cut emissions by 2020. And speaking of the unwanted, who wants inflammation? Not I. And well, researchers say vegetable oil doesn't cause it. They say veggie oil, which is a high in linoleic acid, can be part of a heart-healthy diet. Previous animal studies have shown it to promote inflammation, but the new study argues that animals aren't people, and we respond differently. Researchers say that using soybean, canola, corn, and sunflower oil instead of animal-based fats when cooking can be good for your heart. So that means no fat back or lard? Huh. They looked at 15 different trials to come to their conclusion that vegetable oil is not a cause of inflammation, so there you have it. And looking even farther into the future, ever thought about what we humans might look like in 100,000 years? Hmm. Well, scientists have, and here's what they think. They say as genetic engineering becomes the norm, we'll have more control over what we look like. We'll need an ever-expanding forehead to fit our growing brain. Our eyes will get bigger to accommodate for dimmer environments of off-world colonies, resembling the Tarsier monkey. Our skin will have a deeper pigment to protect it from stronger UV rays. We'll have larger nostrils for lower oxygen environments and a more pronounced brow for lower gravity. The scientists say it's just speculation based on reason, but hmm, let's speculate what I might look like. Huh. And that's all for your Daily Orbit. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't like the bigger eyes.